G'day, fellas, and welcome to a castle game of Age of Empires 3. We are in the final game between these two players, Kaiser Klein, who spawns in over on the west side of the map, playing as the Germans, and over on the opposite side of the map. Who have we got? We got Mido, the big boy, playing the color blue, playing as the Ethiopian. So if you missed the last game, I'm going to spoil them for you right now. Mido won the last game, uh, playing as the brand new Mexican civilization up against the Germans of Kaiser Klein, which is why he is picking them now. Uh, so we're going to have Kaiser Klein on the Germans. Um, and uh, the map, of course, Baja California, took me a while to actually remember that. I'll be honest with you, I didn't remember it. I was reminded. Uh, so somebody in chat mentioned it. They said, hey, Drongo, that's the name of the map. So helping me out a little bit there. But uh, Kaiser Klein uh, already going to be opening up on the Germans, we see, with the market build. So no real surprise. He's going to be looking to trade out a bit of resources. We'll see him do that right now. There we go. And now looking to get those hunting dogs in. Uh, now he's probably spotted out a wood treasure here somewhere. In fact, he has. And now going to be looking to clean that one up as well. So very smart moves already from Kaiser Klein. We see that the great way he is utilizing his Explorer and the treasures available to him uh, to maximize his starting time. Now going to be able to have all that extra food or extra wood rather he needs to drop down a house. So we'll probably see a settler wagon putting that house down. I would go right there. All right, he went there. I'll accept it. That's that's good enough for me. But uh, we'll check in on, on the other side of the map. We'll see how Mido's doing the big toe himself. Uh, the man who is part of the foot. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. They, for some reason, we just call him the big toe. Uh, but, uh, I mean, the big toe is very important. I was reading about this. So if you lose your big toe, you completely lose the ability to balance. So it, be it becomes really hard for you to walk. Even if, you, you wouldn't think it would be that important, right? But it's kind of like the anchor that enables your foot to do its thing. Uh, and without that big toe, it's just like, it's terrible. It'd be kind of like losing a thumb. Can you imagine like trying to grip stuff without having a thumb? Like trying to pick up a... Like you, you can imagine like trying to pick up a normal can with like... Like that's fine, but you go any bigger than that and it would be like, how would you do it? It'd be like trying to pick up a basketball. You see, you see like the NBA players pick up the basketball with one hand and they make it look so easy. And then you go and pick up the basketball and you're like... It just, it just doesn't work. It's the exact same thing. That's that's Mido right now. So he is toeless, um, but uh, going to be trying his best. You see him actually coming around here, positioning towards the back of the treasure. Isn't going to spot it. Does spot it. Okay, Kaiser Klein working his way back here. We see that uh, We see that grizzly bear. Kaiser Klein. Kaiser Klein. Oh, he's not in a good position here. You can see. Now going to be working his way back. And Kaiser Klein going to be getting spotted out here. Right. Oh, this is perfect timing. So he forces Kaiser to commit to this. Uh, so just as the order, the attack goes in, and now Kaiser Klein going to be losing a lot of health. We'll get in nice and close and see who spots this one out. Beautiful shots coming in. Kaiser Klein manages to pick it up, though. A 95 wood going to be going over to him. Uh, Explorer probably still going to be going over. I think Kaiser Klein should be fine here. I don't actually know who wins in this. Do, do we have different multipliers against different things? Uh, yeah, this has got 0.5 against Explorers. Yeah, so Kaiser Klein wins this battle, doesn't he? Oh, but it attacks faster. Yeah, Kaiser Klein wins that battle. So Kaiser Klein manages to secure the treasure, uh, manages to, to force away his opponent's explorer, and uh, manages to make it up to the second age, now going up with the quartermaster. No surprises there. No fishing boats out, despite this being Baja, California already. But um, now we already begin to see him uh, looking towards those market upgrades. We'll check in with Mido, see how he's doing as he begins to explore the, uh, the other side of the map. And we've got Keeps the Pipe here. Uh, Going to be the name of Mido's Explorer. So Mido just naming his Explorer after, you know, his own personal favorite activities that he does in his spare time. Um, but uh, now going to be looking to pick up a nice little treasure down here. 60 wood for Mido. And uh, a couple of XP points going over to him. Uh, back towards the base of Mido. A lot of villagers on this mountain monastery. And I'm talking a lot. We'll take a look at his shipments and see. He is going up with the Sudanese. So no surprises there. They're considered... Pretty much the, the number one uh, age up option. Um, he's got the Temenyas in his deck. He's also got Big Benny in here. I see that he's got Zabenyas. What else have we got in here? It's so hard to see when they're dark. Hey, devs, if you're watching this, can we make it so that like all the cards here are lit? Um, but like, I don't know, there, there would just be something indicating that they're not available yet or something like that. Like maybe you would just light these up instead. Like maybe make the one like give it yellow, but then like put blacken these ones out. I don't know. Just because I'm sitting here and I'm just like, I don't know what these cards are. Like it, it maybe, re maybe increase the opacity or increase the color, the saturation a little bit more on that. It's very, very hard to see it. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's uh, there's no export crates. 
as Gibson has identified, so it is a terrible deck. Uh, but uh, it does look like he yeah he doesn't actually have the influence uh, in his uh, in his deck. Now going to be going for Jesuit influence as his opening. Um, so this is a, a classic opening. This is I think this was like a week one opening. Uh, love to see it. And already going with the three Aboons. Uh, so getting them out nice and early. Keep in mind, there's a build limit of five of these bad boys. Uh, not going to be able to get out anymore. So just going to have to deal with... He's got four of them out. But that's a pretty good opening already for Mito. He'll be very happy with that. Dropping down that war camp at five minutes and 20. His economy is looking very strong at this point in time. And with the Jesuit influence behind this, he's definitely playing a greedier game. Going to be looking to get in another shipment here as well. Trading post down towards this uh, southern position. And the Dervish going to be coming out. So we'll see how he looks to play it, whether he goes for a big Benny. I wouldn't be surprised if this is his option or whether he even looks to go into the 12 uh, Dervish. But we'll see how he plays it. Dervish now coming in to meet the uh, the Ulan. Ulan's going to be looking to pick off this Villager. Villager got to be careful here. It's down to 32 HP. It does look like it is going to go down. So uh, unfortunate positioning there for Mido to have that Villager. I don't even know what that Villager was out there doing, but he does lose an Ulan. Uh, now some Spears or Pikes rather down towards this Southern uh, trading post and more Dervish going to be moving out across the map. He's got to be careful though. Keep in mind that uh, he's got Ulans on the other side of the map and he's going to have to be watching out for them. Five crossbow going to be coming out now as well. You can see keeps the pipe. Probably going to be going down there. 45 experience going over to the German player. Uh, so not not terrible uh, for Mido. Uh, only manages to get out three Gascania at this point in time. Uh, so not getting perfect batches. Uh, typically, you would expect perfect batches to be coming out for Mido. Why, do, why is the O and P so big on these? I really don't know. But uh, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm impressed by the size of your P. Um, <laughs> Kaiser Klein down towards the south has cleaned up that trading post and uh, going to look to continue to take all of the trading posts. We can see he's got so much wood in the bank. And that, that's one of the things that people say about Kaiser Klein. He might be salty, but he's got a lot of wood. Um, but uh, yeah, going to be able to clean up that, uh, that trading post. Managed to take down... The uh, the third trading post will be looking to get up that uh, that oh he's already getting it oh he's already getting it the stagecoach wait where is the stagecoach was he was he getting it and then he cancelled it am I crazy I might be crazy uh, but uh, we'll have a look and see how Kaiser Klein's doing back in the base uh, it looks like he he's still balancing towards that second age sending through 600 wood as the next shipment so really looking to commit and stick to age two at the moment. We'll check in with Mido, see how he's doing. Looks like Shuttle Warrior is going to be coming in from the home city. He did go for a 700 wood shipment. We'll see what other shipments he's got available to him. Still got Big Benny in the bank if he wants to go in that direction. Obviously, if he's thinking about aging up, he'll be able to drop that down anytime he wants. But uh, still got livestock back here. Livestock percentages aren't particularly high at the moment. 73% for wood, 63 for the gold. But, uh, or coin, rather. The coin. Yes, it is, uh, it is coin, isn't it? Yes, coin. Uh, Shuttle Warrior is going to be looking to chase down these Ulans. Might actually get a snare off here if they're not careful. Ulans coming out. You can see first one probably going to be going down. Gaskenya getting off a nice little volley. Second volley coming off. Does take out that first or that, that Ulan. Uh, more Dervish going to be coming out. The final batch of Dervish. And that mass is beginning to build. So he's up to 11 Dervish with the, the four that have just come in. That's 15 in total. Uh, and Shuttle Warrior is beginning to build as well. Up to 11 here. So beautiful mass opening uh, for Mido. He's going to be looking to push out towards his opponent's side of the base. Or of the map, rather. And pretty decent mass already. And Kaiser Klein coming in with a nice little wall. You can see the quick walls coming out for Kaiser Klein. That, uh, that settler wagon losing about 60% of its health. Shuttle Warriors taking out the first of the Explorer. We'll begin to watch the, the action unfold now as the Shuttle Warriors manage to make it through between the barracks. As Spear's going to be coming back, looking to clean them up. We, we see the Dervish getting stuck somewhat on top here. Need to be out clearing these these pikes, not having a lot of luck of getting through there. Gaskenya's just getting caught in the mix, and at the same time, all these Shuttle Warriors just getting taken out, doing a really good job of micro now. we've Unfortunately, Mido is somewhat stuck on these barracks, and you can see that they've got a whole big batch coming through. Mido going to get cleaned up completely here as the next batch now comes out of the crossbow. Dervish on the back going to be trying to clean this up. You can see that Mido just having a very terrible time. Minutemen getting called in there as well. All the spears now going to be looking to clean this up as well. Mido having a terrible time. Keep in mind behind this, okay, Kaiser Klein has also got the three trading posts and he sent the three settler wagons from the home city. He is in an absolutely roaring position right now. Very far ahead of his opponent. Much greater economy. So we're talking about 24 villages, which of, of those 24 villages, you know, how many of those bad boys are settler wagons? Eight. So really that number is 32. And then also include the fact that three trading posts, each with the stagecoach upgrade, are out as well. So you're realistically looking at about... 44 villages now and compare that over to Mido who's sitting on 27 villages no water economy no nothing 
Uh, now, he's got 27 villagers. He's got the five A-boons in there, so we'll call that 32. He's also got the mountain monastery, so call it 34. Uh, but still about 10 villagers behind his opponent. But both players focusing on their economies at this point in time. Uh, Mido definitely behind, though, when it comes to his economy. Mass continuing to build right now for Mido. He looks to be sticking it in the second age. Now, he should have seen that, uh, that flank coming. Uh, he's looking to now get in more Dervish. Uh, so he's going to be bringing in 12 Dervish. He's already got 10 out, so didn't actually have the mass. Uh, he will be able to add in more if he wants to. Uh, so up, up now to 22 Dervish for him. We'll check in with Kaiser Klein, see how he's doing that mass beginning to build and look absolutely beautiful as those crossbows begin to fire off on the Dervish. Going to be taking off those shots. We see the Shuttle Warriors, and that mass is just absolutely huge. Doppel Soldiers getting in there as well. And uh, beautiful little concave right now for Mido, or rather for, uh, for Kaiser Klein. Mido going to have to be forced falling back. And once again, those Shuttle Warriors just getting in very bad positions. Mido taking not the best fights here. I've got to be honest with you guys. I don't like the way that Mido is positioning his forces. A lot of these fights, the first fight when they came in, it was very awkward between the, these two barracks. He lost a lot of units, was getting kited out by the crossbows. And now we see a similar uh, reenactment coming in, in towards the middle of the map. And now Mido is going to be trying to chase back these crossbows, but not having a lot of luck. Probably needs to look towards getting up to that third age because these crossbows are just going to keep kiting. Keep in mind the range on these bad boys, 18 versus 16. He's always going to have that advantage. So a really, really uh, difficult spot there for Mido. And now losing a couple of units almost needlessly just simply because of the way uh, that, that there is... Uh there's bad pathing around this area and uh you know pathing has been a word that i haven't used in my um in my age of empires casting for a long time uh playing age of empires 4 they managed to fix up the pathing pretty well uh but for age of empires 3 still got a way to come we can see as uh, as units struggle you know very clearly mido has told all of his units to get back over here and you've got a shuttle warrior that is running in this direction you know running out around this trading post like very you you know where you should be going buddy and it's not in this fucking direction and yet you still do it uh so obviously still a bit of work to do with regard to pathing so we'll have to you know keep an eye on that one but now Mido beginning to expand up towards the north, obviously running out of resources towards his base. He's still got a couple of berries back here, but those guys not going to gather up as fast. And Mido under a bit of pressure right now as the Ulans look to connect with those villagers. A few Shuttle Warriors getting in the mix, trying to deny any potential attacks from coming through. They managed to do, do so and actually keep the Ulans at bay. Going to be getting some decent snares here. I don't think that Kaiser was paying attention and he manages to turn around what could have been a very decisive victory into a very... Bad trade, and unfortunately, a, a pretty significant defeat, losing out four or five Ulans there, only escaping with two. So not too good at all, actually. Yeah, losing five in total. So nice little pick up there, but uh, we're going to be heading now. Actually, I just hit the wrong button. Hopefully that doesn't stuff too much up of our game time. But um, Kaiser Klein now going to the third age. Exiled Prince going to be his, uh, his age up of choice. It looks like a little bit of walling coming through. Uh, and uh, probably going to be looking to secure in some uh, some war wagons. Maybe some uh, some skirmishes. We'll have to see how he plays it. Is getting out those Ulans. We'll see what he uh, he looks to get with regard to his shipments as well. Keep in mind, he is up in the third age. So going to have access to Jaegers. Going to have access to Black Riders. Uh, but probably going to be looking to send through those three war wagons. War wagons, normally the favorable uh, th unit to send in the third age upon reaching that age up. Just because of their how heavy they are on the gold. Uh, but we'll see how he does it. Um, we'll check in with Mido. We'll see what's going on on his side of the map. You can see he is thinking about going up. Does have Big Benny in stock. Uh, so going to be able to trade this bad boy in. At the moment, 700 gold or 700 coins. So not a lot. Uh, does actually sell him. There he goes. Goodbye, Benny. It was nice knowing you. Uh, still a little bit, bit to go on, uh, on that one. So about 100 gold short at the moment. He'll be able to trade that out with his market if he wants to. Does he even have a market yet? I don't see a market. Walls beginning to come up in the middle of the map, though. This is a good sign. I don't know about you guys. I love a long game. I don't want a short game. I don't want a six-minute game where, you know, the Mexican player beats the, the enemy. I, I want a long game. And this, to me, signals that Mido wants a long game as well. Uh, obviously, losing the villager there. Uh, Going to be losing the walls as well. Looks like that villager up towards the north might go down as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, un unfortunately... Uh, for Mido. He might not get that long game. Kaiser Klein really going to be trying to push him towards the limit. Going up to the next stage now. Going to be going up with Habesha. Uh, so if I remember correctly, Habesha going to be providing that extra gold. Uh, so we'll see how Mido looks to play it. Where, whether he looks to go up to the Fast Imperial. Uh, or fast Imperial, sorry. Fast Industrial. Uh, I apologize to all my AoE 3 frogs out there. But uh, now a bit of a push coming through. Veteran Crossbows has come through as well. A little bit of a scout also coming out from Mido. And uh, does look like it will get chased down by this large army of Ulans. And uh, doesn't really spot out too much that's going on. 
Uh, Mido now reaching the Fortress H. We'll check in with him and see how he's doing as we head back to his side of the map. And it looks like going up with Habesha, he's going to have access to that Mountain Monastery coming down towards this, uh, this Silver Mine, looking to position it down there. And uh, we've now got... Uh, we'll take a look and see what he's got in the way of upgrades. Nothing coming through just yet. Needs to be looking at Elite Infantry. Not a lot of resources in the bank. He's actually looking to get Neftenya out instead. So I'm wondering what has uh, what spooked him. Because ideally, you'd love to be looking at getting that Gaskenya upgrade. You can see he's got 25 Gaskenya out. He's also got the Shotal Warriors. So the faster he can get this out, the better for him. Because that's going to buff up all of those units. Uh, Elite Infantry actually came in. It must have been... It, my mistake. It was at a different war camp. Uh, that's all right. It's, it, it's, it's standard Drongo plays right there. Standard Drongo plays. Uh, Kaiser Clan now going to begin sieging down some of these lesser buildings. You know what, Granary? I'm just kidding. You're, you're still a building in my heart. It's just you're free, so you're a lesser building. Uh, but uh, now going to be looking at taking down this mountain monastery. You can see that there's plenty of units in here. Black Riders actually coming out for Kaiser Klein. He's looking to do, do it dirty with these Black Riders. And aren't they just the most beautiful units? I mean, this game released in 2007, 2000, 2005, 2006. Black Riders, though, they have always been beautiful. Ever since the day they were born, they've been absolutely beautiful. The most fierce units out there. When your enemy had Black Riders out, you knew you had to be careful. And Kaiser Klein now going to be looking to push in towards his enemy's base. We'll reveal the map as uh, Kaiser Klein's Black Riders look steadfast on that back line. A lot of Naftanya out here. We can see those elite units. Mido going to be trying to hold on. A bit of a score lead at the moment for Kaiser Klein. He's up about 4,000 points, but uh, Kaiser Klein continues to posture. No Falconets out either at this stage, but... Uh, Mido is definitely playing well at the moment. I'm feeling I'm feeling it for Mido, uh, but we'll see how he goes up against this large mass of uh, skirmishers here. 18 skirmishers, 26 crossbows, two minute men out here as well. Still not looking to, to fight, not looking to connect. Let's see if we've got the big boy on the way uh, for Mido. We'll see what's in his deck. He does have the big boy in deck. It does look like he's also got uh, Santa Horsemen that are going to be coming in here as well. It's going to be the Santa Horsemen going up against the, uh, the Black Riders. Mido now going to begin pushing out the center horsemen on the back line. You can see them as they begin to come in. Mido needs to be careful of these black riders. We've talked about it time and time again that we've got Kaiser Klein on the Germans here. He loves to play with those black riders, and you can see how much damage they're going to be doing to all of these cavalry units. Let's watch as he focuses down these center horsemen. Keep in mind, they do have that 20% range resist, but they are going to get absolutely melted by the units of the, or by the black riders. Kaiser Klein's black riders, they are looking very fearsome now, and you can see the, the center horsemen, just how well they, they managed to get on top of it, but just getting absolutely focused down by the Black Riders and Kaiser Klein in a bit of a difficult spot. I'm starting to get a bit worried for him now as the mass is continuing to push up right now for Mido. Mido looking incredibly good actually. A lot of Neftanya on the back line has dwindled down the mass of Black Riders down to four units only. Keep in mind that was nine units at the beginning. Uh, so he's done a great job and now he's forced back his opponent completely. Still a bit of score difference between these two players. About 3k, 2.5k at the moment. But keep in mind the economy is still in, uh, in Kaiser Klein's favor but the unit strength definitely seems to be in Mido's favor at this point in time. We'll check in on how he's doing. He's on 77 population at the moment. We'll compare that over to Kaiser Klein, who's on 135. Population is so far ahead when it comes to the population. What's the difference? That's a lot of Ulans. Maybe that's the difference? That is, uh, that, that's, that's a lot of units. He's got a huge mass here. Where did this mass come from? He's just got 28 skirms. What, didn't this mass just evaporate? Where... How did that even happen? I don't even know how that happened right there. Town Center going to be coming out for Mito. This, keep in mind now, this guy takes a long time to come up. Mito thought he had established map control just then. Uh, but my fear is that he hasn't established map control. So Mito has no idea what's going on right there. This Town Center, 900 health. When these Ulans find it, they're just going to be coming up right to here and sieging it down straight away. Almost guaranteed. Now going to be looking to, to potentially take on the front lines here. We see the Skirms. No, he's actually got the times three upgrade. So we have a look towards his base. He's going to have an arsenal back here somewhere. Down here, he's got the counter infantry rifling already through. And now that town center, as, uh, as identified, isn't going to be too long for this world. Mido going to be pushing up. Going to be fighting for it. 400 export or 400 uh, influence, rather, has gone into this town center. He wants to make sure he keeps this. Shuttle Warrior is going to be coming out as well. We'll head into the, uh, the beautiful... Uh, the the, uh, the beautiful fight now as uh, as the war wagons looking to supplement the black riders and on the front line the Ulans getting completely shredded by the Gascan you can see them entering melee mode and doing 18 damage a pop with the times three bonus and once again the shuttle warriors just getting on top of those skirmishers you can see how slow they're moving they're barely moving like a ba baby crawls having such a difficult time and now going to be trying to equalize it the dervish on the back line with the Neftenya and we've got a game on our hands ladies and gentlemen game one a quick game game two an incredibly quick game uh, by my standards and game three now 
actually coming out. We're entering into that 20-minute mark, and it's starting to look really, really good at this point because Mido has managed to uh, to not only just even up it on military front, but he, on the economic front now, he's looking to try and get even, obviously adding in that second town center as well, so really playing for the long game. Kaiser Klein continuing to push up towards the front, looking a little bit scared for Mido at this point in time. If he loses this town center, he's going to be in a bit of a difficult spot. His win condition at the moment is to, is to keep this alive, and if he doesn't do that, it's going to be very difficult for him. We see more reinforcements now coming in. Three three war wagons as a shipment going to be coming in. And we also see range cavalry caracol coming in from the uh, from the arsenal. Neftenia mass quite small at the moment for Mido. You can just see the unit numbers really beginning to dwindle. But at the same time for Kaiser Klein, he's just macroing absolutely beautifully. Those, those numbers of skirmishes are just staying up. No Jaegers coming through just yet for him. But uh, he doesn't need them at this point. The German mercenaries, there's no need for those. 387 health left on this town center. Not too much. A, 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 just a, a little bit of a breeze comes through. That thing is absolutely dead to the world. But uh, it looks like for the moment he has repelled the attack and, and given him a lifeline. He's, he's drawn attention to the fact that, hey, you are... Uh, you might have uh, some problems elsewhere in your base at the moment, as it looks like we've got settlers and villagers gathering next to each other. And uh, and Kaiser says, well, hey, you can't be doing that. Not in my neighborhood. But uh, 70 population at the moment for Mido. Kaiser Klein sitting on 175 population. How is he so far ahead when it comes to pop? I mean, he's got 48 villagers, right? And we can assume that eight of those are settler wagons. So 56. Uh, and compare that to 38. So, I mean, realistically, he's on 38. And then add in the Aboon, so 5. So, with 50, about a 15 villager difference. But then I guess also throwing the trading posts. 15, about 27 villager difference at the moment. So, Kaiser Klein just ahead by a country mile uh, right now. And looking to clean up some of those Aboons down towards the south. You can see they were trying their best uh, to gather up. Actually, he does have the mountain monasteries as well. He's got a limit of 4, though. Shuttle Warrior is going to be coming out and looking to try and get in on these Ulans. But definitely, it seems like Kaiser Klein quite far ahead at this point. It was a bit worrying when he did push in towards Mido's base. And there were definitely some points where it did seem like Kaiser Klein was very far ahead of his opponent. But Mido managed to even it up now has fallen behind. And I think it just comes down to Kaiser Klein having control of these trading posts. I think that's really what it comes down to. Had Mido had control of these trading posts for the, the duration of the game, like his opponent has, I think it would have made all the difference. Cavalry combat now going to be coming in as well. Jaegers also could be coming in if he wants to look at overpopping, but obviously still going to be a while before he gets that shipment in. So unlikely to happen. Uh, still just the single town center as well at this point for Kaiser Klein, uh, but he really doesn't need anything more at this stage. He's just absolutely fine. Uh, we'll check back in with Mido. We can see he's sitting at 90 population at the moment. Would definitely feel like he's behind. Trying his best to get up and even with his opponent as uh, as he uh, continues training those villagers two by two. A lot of war wagons out right now. But uh, a decent mass of Gascon is building up. It kind of looks a bit fuzzy. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. Why was that fuzzy? They kind of look really fuzzy from out here. I don't know. They, they looked fuzzy. Did you guys see them looking fuzzy? They kind of look fuzzy, right? Right? Well... That's all right. That's all right. We'll we will deal with that. Uh, we'll deal with that issue later. Um, but uh, now, speaking of issues, it looks like Kaiser Klein going to be creating another issue here for Mido. We can see a few Black Riders still in it, and uh, yeah, Kaiser Klein's Black Riders they are somewhat notorious in Age of Empires three for just being persistent. They don't they don't ever die, or at least that's the way it feels. They don't ever die. But now Ulan's going to be running in towards the base of Mido, looking to get a nice little body block before they use, these villagers make it inside the town center. Indeed they do. You can see the upgrade has come through for Mido's villagers, but still only 180 health, so not going to be pretty as these Ulan's look to now clean up and focus down that town center. Keep in mind that the town center towards the north has been healed up, so it's going to take a, lo a lot to take that down. But uh, in the middle of the map, Kaiser Klein actually going for his own town center now, and, uh, and players... I think Mido was thinking about a, a, a bit of a base trade, has decided against it, now going to be coming back towards his own base, but this is a difficult spot for him because you look at this army coming out from the German player, and when I say German player, I'm not talking about, you know, Germany as a country, I'm talking about he's playing the Germans. It's a huge army. This is absolutely massive, and he's got to keep kiting away, even though he's got the big, big an army at this point in time, where if he fought him in a man fight directly against each other, he's still going to completely overwhelm him. So I'm curious to see the fact that he, he still tries to eke out those tiny little advantages despite being so far ahead. And we now see the scores beginning to build up about a, a double score lead at this point in time. You could double Mido's score and it would be about where Kaiser's score is. 
But uh, Kaiser now going to be falling back. Keep in mind that Cav Combat is in. So once these units are finished sieging down these buildings, they're going to be able to come back in. They're going to be very strong. Now Kaiser Klein going to be looking to defend this position a little bit. You can see him kiting out or at least trying to up against these units. The Gascania trying to make their way through and get to the front line, just getting completely shredded. Keep in mind that on the south side here, we do have these skirmishers which have got the counter infantry rifling, going to be doing extra damage against those heavy units. And you can see the units or the army just falling apart there from Kaiser Klein. Might are doing a great job to clean that up, but just so many units coming out right now from Kaiser Klein and good game gets called. Mido loses. Kaiser Klein goes through to the next round and looks to potentially take the sup cup. Let's check the post game. Uh, pretty well played there from, uh, from both players. I definitely feel like it really came down to the control of the trading posts. So we saw in the early game, there was a bit of a fight that broke out where Mido came into the base of Kaiser Klein. I feel like if he'd gone after the trading posts, it could have been a different game. If he had just instead looked to go towards those trading posts, siege them down, potentially replace them for himself, it could have been completely different. And you could see in the early game, Kaiser Klein with the, the larger uh, military unit population, just, you know, doing classic German things, manages to age up here. That's that's the only time it really gets even another fight happening over towards this uh, position. But yeah, just a very, very tough spot there for Mito, but incredibly well played from Kaiser Klein. He got ahead in the early game with the village elite and just never really... Uh, never really went back down from there but we'll have a look at the resource gathered and you can see that they were actually very even throughout that game so the primary difference being those extra ulans that come in from the shipments but fellas if you're watching this on youtube i hope you guys have enjoyed this uh this brief look at age of empires 3 it's been a long time since we've been here but i'm confident we'll be back very shortly thank you for watching